Hi everybody, this is Big Anklevich here. Thanks for coming to my newest edition of the Anklecast. Uh, I'm doing another video cast. For those of you who are watching it, some of you are just listening because it's also available as an audio only. But uh, I don't know why I'm doing another video cast. Truthfully, I suppose it's just because I have a, a weird uh, fixation for it or something like that. Uh, because nobody watched the video cast. I mean, I posted it on my blog, and I think maybe a third of the people who even came to the blog actually watched it. So, what's the point of it? It's a damned good question. But anyways, I'm doing it because I, I feel like it. Mostly, I think, because I saw this thing. I was sitting at work one day, and this person went by holding a styrofoam cup and she'd cut the top of the cup uh, so that she could slide a phone down into it and use it as a kind of a makeshift tripod, you know, a cheapy, uh, no-cost tripod for your phone. And I thought, you know what, that is freaking awesome. I want to do that with something. And I thought, you know what, if I, I just, I could use that, I could uh, attach it to my dashboard with some tape. There's some tape on this thing and just tape it onto my dashboard and slide my phone into it and I would have a tripod in my, and I could do video uh, ankle casts as I drive home. Just as I do the audio ankle cast. So here I am trying, I did a couple of tests. I used an actual styrofoam cup. Uh, let, me, let me go to a video of that really quick. This was the styrofoam cup test. <clears throat> Alright, this is a test. This is only a test. Test of the emergency podcast system. Yeah, I'm just going to get lunch. Uh, <laughs> I was... I, I did bring lunch with me today. But then I warmed it up and realized it was my daughter's vegetarian crap. So you can uh, see that the styrofoam cup test was kind of a failure. This guy's getting over. Shit. I'm about to die here. Got a gigantic truck coming from one side and some guy with a active horn coming from the other side. Okay, I was saying something. <laughs> oh yes, styrofoam cup. It was really squeaky. It was really squeaky and annoying. And um, yeah, so I tried a, a second test. Here's a little bit of that. Off we go. I'm actually today. I'm just going to get a uh, soda at the gas station. So. We'll see how that works. Uh, I suppose I'll get a soda at the gas station. I'm not going to have any problem with that working, but um, I don't know what I'm talking about. In the first test, of course, I uh, didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't get my mic hooked up so that I could get a much better sound. So I tried it with the with the mic, thinking, no, oh, that'll probably eliminate the squeakiness of the stupid styrofoam cup. And it kind of did, but not really. It really just kind of didn't. So I decided I decided I have to get a non-styrofoam cup. And I, I forgot about this for a long time before I finally, you know, remembered and I saved the cup the last time that I went to the delectable 
eating establishment of Carl's Jr. It's a very health conscious restaurant and I'm just a health conscious kind of guy so that's where I went. I saved my Carl's Jr. cup. I cut a hole in it so that I could slide my phone in and here we are doing that. Um, now this is going to be suddenly not very visual because today I have for you a story. Um, and I didn't shoot a movie of the story. <laughs> I just read the story and you're going to see just like a little kind of a slate go up that has maybe like some art for the story. But I'm not going to do anything fancy. This is just going to stay on that slate. So those of you who are watching, uh, you know, listen to the story. Maybe you can like do other stuff while the story's playing so you don't feel like you have to watch. And then you can come back uh, when it's back to my amazingly non-radio face. You know, so you don't want to miss out on much of the time of this much, this much good looks, right? You just, you, you need to stay on it. Anyway, so here's that story. It's called True Colors. And uh, the reason I'm doing this story is because it's, it's a sort of a broken mirror story. Uh, way back when, Rish and I uh, were coming up with ideas for the broken mirror uh, contest. And this was one of the ideas for it. I pitched it. I'm going to play that afterwards when we're done with the story. Um, but anyways, uh, Rich, Rich liked the idea. And so he thought we should both write a version of it. And one day when I was needing to write, hadn't written in, I don't know, like six months or something, whatever my usual uh, shit fest is. And uh, so I thought, okay, I'll just write that idea that Rich said was good one time. And so I sat down and I wrote this story. And I don't think it's very good, unfortunately. So that's the main reason why you haven't seen it yet. I, I, I didn't think it was worth sharing. But... Rish shared his story, his version of the story, which I don't have the slightest idea what it was called. Suicide is Painless, I don't know. Probably wasn't called that, but I don't remember what it was called. But anyways, he shared it on, on the Outcast. I'll put a link in the low bar, in the down in the show notes. Oh my gosh, there's a construction worker right there throwing a cone out in front of me. That was scary. Uh, <laughs> Don't expect that when you're on the freeway. Somebody just suddenly throwing a cone towards your car. Um, so I was saying that I'll put a link to Rish's story down there so you guys can uh, take a look at it or take a listen to it, I suppose, and uh, enjoy it if you haven't already. And if you have, then you'll know what I'm talking about when you hear the story and you see what it's about. So we're gonna go to the story now and uh, and then in a little bit, when it's done, we'll come back and uh, we'll talk some more about uh, the whole history of this thing. So I'll see you guys on the other side. True Colors by B.D. Anklevich The maple frosting on this donut was really exquisite, but it still didn't do much for Quinn. He remembered loving donuts when he was a kid and always being so excited when his parents got him one. But it didn't seem to hold that same feeling for him anymore. He'd picked the most renowned donut shop in town, where everyone told him they tasted the best. But chewing up the fluffy pastry and sweet frosting gave him no joy. He finished chewing the last of the donut, tossed his napkin in the trash, and headed for his car. He slid behind the wheel of the Corvette, and the powerful engine roared to life. He peeled out of the parking lot at an unsafe speed. He wasn't worried about cops or accidents. In fact, he welcomed them. Perhaps the excitement might pull him out of his depression. He'd tried everything else. Quinn had spent his entire adult life searching for the magic that he'd felt as a child. Childhood had been filled with so much joy and happiness, whereas being an adult had none of it. He'd tried all the usual things that adults turned to for solace and comfort. 
sex, no matter how exotic, didn't bring him happiness. Even multiple partners at once, something he'd expected to be quite fantastic, held no lasting pleasure. He'd tried God, Buddha, Allah, Joseph Smith, and Taoism, as well as several other lesser-known cults. But they didn't satisfy his need for the happiness he was seeking. Exercising didn't do it. They say that exercise is the best balm for what ails you in life, but it did nothing for him. From running to swimming, CrossFit to P90X, nothing left him feeling joy, despite his body being a chiseled masterpiece version of the human form. Food didn't do it either, as evidenced by the donut's failure to excite. Pizza to gourmet, nothing made him feel what he was missing. Nor did thrill-seeking extreme sports. Others seemed to be quite happy when snowboarding down pristine backcountry mountains or cliff-diving in Peru, but not him. Drugs and alcohol did nothing for him as well. Well, not nothing. He could get high, but it didn't bring him what he was seeking. Just left him with an addiction to battle. The worst part was that he wasn't really even sure what he was searching for. He only vaguely remembered the feeling of joy from his childhood. It was intense and fulfilling, but that was about all he could remember. His whole childhood was sort of a foggy soup, really. He didn't know why he couldn't remember it better. He knew other people who had many crystal clear memories of their youth, but for him was just hazy shadows and impressions of feelings. He didn't understand why, but it drove him to try everything he could to reignite those feelings and memories. Tearing down the street, he noticed his gas gauge registering low. Would running out of gas be fun or interesting? No, that was mostly just a pain in the ass and he'd experienced his share of pains in the ass as well. They only made him feel more like an adult than ever, so he tried to avoid them. He pulled over at the next gas station, a 7-Eleven, to fill his tank. While there, he figured he'd get a soda. Soda was something he liked, even if it didn't give him the feelings he was in search of. He stood in front of the soda fountain, trying to choose between Mountain Dew and Cherry Coke when he thought, why don't I just get both? Then he was hit with a strangely clear memory of childhood. He didn't want to get both. He needed to get everything. Mix them all together. What was that called again? Oh yeah, a suicide. He'd considered suicide before to end all this longing, but he'd never considered this kind of suicide. He grabbed a cup and pressed it under the nozzle for Coke, then Diet Coke and caffeine-free Coke. Something felt wrong about it, however. He stopped the flow of caffeine-free Coke, and then on a whim poured the whole concoction out and started over. He felt like he knew what to do now. First was Dr. Pepper, then Mountain Dew, then back to the Coke products fountain for Coke and Cherry Coke. He even felt like he was being guided to the exact proportions of each, shutting off the spigot on each one at a particular moment that felt right. His skin tingled, and the short hairs on his arms and the back of his neck stood upright. Something weird was happening here. Weird, but right. Very, very right. He finished his potion, put a lid on the big gulp cup, inserted a straw, and took a preliminary swig before paying for it. His insides twisted, and he felt very strange. It tasted terrible, though, like toothpaste or bad medicine. His hopes began to fall again. The donut he'd eaten earlier had been much more likely to bring him what he was after than this foul brew. He took another swig, nonetheless, and headed for the register to pay for his big gulp. How many of these things had he bought as a kid? It had to be a number way too high to count. He remembered taking any bit of allowance he managed to muster to the 7-Eleven for a bit of sweet, bubbly, syrupy goodness. 
he reached the register and set his cup on the counter. How much do I owe you? he asked and looked up at the clerk. His eyes widened. The clerk was not what he was expecting. Instead of the usual Pakistani guy he remembered from this particular 7-Eleven, an eight-foot-tall being that seemed to be made of liquid light stood before him. But that wasn't all that was different. The store was completely different as well. Gone were the Formica countertops and linoleum floors. They had been replaced with a substance that Quinn couldn't even name. It was as if a rainbow had been poured into a smelter and refined into a solid form, then fabricated into walls, floors, and furnishings. Quinn stood agape before the being. He felt that he should be terrified, but he wasn't. Instead, he was filled with a singular joy that he'd been searching for for so long. God, sex, food, adrenaline, and drugs hadn't brought him what he'd been missing. Instead, it had been a simple concoction of soda pop. A suicide. Not an actual suicide, but in beverage form. Surprising and outlandish how life can turn out. The being's face split open in what could have been a frightening way, but Quinn realized was simply its version of a smile. How he knew that's what it was, he couldn't say, but he did. It seemed to be quite familiar, in fact. Master, it is I who owe you for my life, my world, my everything. Quinn blinked agog. Its voice was melodious, pleasing, and beautiful. Had it called him Master? Yes, Master, that did seem right. Fitting, but why? We have missed you, Master, over these long years that you have been away, it said. Yes, Quinn said. Things were coming back to him like long rusted locks in his mind were breaking open with screeching clanks. I have missed you as well, Laxon. Laxon, yes, that name was right. He knew Laxon well. He created Lexon now that he thought about it. No wonder he called him Master. Nothing could be more appropriate. He had created everything here. How could he have forgotten? No wonder he'd felt such a depression and emptiness. There was so much more that he should have been doing. But his mind had been turned dark. By chance, or perhaps by design, he'd blindly flailed his way back to the light. And now he understood what had happened. He had a job that he needed to do. The world he had created of rainbows and light had been usurped. He knew who had done it. And it was time to undo it. His very first creation had been a being called Samaliel. Together, they had then created this rainbow world. But Samaliel had grown jealous and wanted everything for himself. He had attacked Quinn and, darkening his mind, banished him to the mundane world of Earth. But now, he was back, and he was ready to settle the score. The Rainbow Man was out to make things right again. Okay, so that was the story. Uh, as you're probably saying to yourself, it wasn't very good. Um, it wasn't the worst thing ever, but uh, sadly, uh, the thing I dislike the most about it was just how non-ambitious it was. I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play for you the the bit, see, way back when uh, we did Broken Mirror Story contests, and this, I think, was for the second contest, Rish and I got together, and his idea was, we'll come up with the prompt for the contest, 
by each of us showing up with three, it may have been three to five, I don't remember how many ideas exactly we had, but I'm gonna say it was three. Three ideas for the prompt. We'll pitch them at each other, listen to them, and then we'll decide, and then we will tell everybody what the one is that we decided. Well, we recorded the whole pitch session, but uh, we only used in the show the portion where we already had the idea and we told them what it was. Uh, the pitch session itself was one of those things that Rish loved to do where it was like an outtake that's just hidden on the page so you could listen to it if you could find it, which probably means that no one has ever heard it. But uh, I tracked it down, pulled up the segment where I told Rish the idea so here, check that out, and uh, and we'll talk about it when we get back. A person decides to recapture a small part of their childhood by mixing all the different flavors in the soda fountain in their cup. When they drink, things change. <laughs> That's effed up, man. Even if we don't use that one, you need to write that as a story. That's foobar. That's the kind of thing you and I would do as just a broken mirror together. Okay, on the same wavelength, a child is proclaimed king or queen, but it turns out to be more than just a game. Mm. So that was when I pitched the story to him, and he, you know, he was just like, "Oh, that sounds fun. It sounds like something you and I should do." But it wasn't what he wanted. Instead, he wanted a child is proclaimed king or queen. And it turns out to be more than just a game. Um, and so I don't know, if you're a long-time listener of the show, you might remember that broken mirror, uh, that round of broken mirror, um, because uh, it had some good stories in it, I think. Um, so... Yeah, I, I decided I would write that story, and sadly, the story ends where my pitch ends. You know what I mean? I think that's the thing that makes me hate this story so much, makes me think that it was worthless, is the idea that I came up with and pitched at Rish was all I had. And, you know, the guy goes and he makes a suicide drink, and he drinks from it and things change. The end. No, that's not supposed to be the end. That was a that was a, a prompt to get started with, not the entirety of the story, the end. Uh, so that's how what I think of that. Oh traffic. Time to slow down rapidly. <sighs> be a long drive home folks um so yeah that's that's my biggest beef with this story my my problem why i never wanted to share it i guess is because there's nothing to it i mean i, di I didn't want to write something in intense when i wrote it i you know hadn't been writing much and so writing this was better than writing nothing and so i tried to do something but yeah, when I was done with it, I didn't think like, oh, well, I really killed it with that. Um, I'm going to keep writing. Instead, I probably went like another six months without writing. So a lot of good it did me. Um, but I figured since Rish shared his story, uh, which is a better story, um, his at least has some, some more detail. It's not a, like a thousand word flash story like mine was. Um, so, you know, it's a little more worth it. Uh, but anyways, that was uh, that. Um, that's that story. Uh, now, way back when, and it's been a while since I did this last, I think I had one episode, the, the, the first video episode, um, in between uh, the last episode and this. Uh, I don't know if I'm making any sense. But anyways, two episodes ago. I did a reaction uh, podcast where I asked everybody, I, I shared a story that was called Bumps in the Night, and I asked everybody to record their 
uh, impressions on the story and send me those audio files and I would respond to them. And so my last two podcasts ago was uh, me responding to those. And uh, the funny thing was when I did that, uh, Justin Charles, who edits a lot of stuff, a lot of the stories that we use for us, wanted to respond to uh, my story, but every time he would turn on the uh, recorder, he would he would just get all flustered, and he couldn't get out what he wanted to say, and so he just gave up. But he did, <laughs> for fun, send me his recordings where he got flustered and, and then gave up. Uh, so he didn't want to leave it at that. So um, a, a few days later, he sent me a message saying, hey, uh, I, I, I can record a new one for you. And I was just like, well, I'm past that story. I'm not going to, going to go back to it. So uh, if you want to send me a reaction, send me a reaction to something else. Um, and so instead, he recorded a comment that went to my story on the Christmas episode, which I think was called The Christmas Wish. Um, so I'm going to play that comment, and then I'll respond to that. And uh, I, uh, we'll see on the other side of that comment, folks. Check it out. Just cast episode one. Let's say hi to everyone. I'm Justin Charles. Uh, also, thanks to Big for letting me do another one. Sorry for the first one, but I did have a lot of things to say. Unfortunately, when the microphone was right in front of me, that's it. Gone blank. Completely think of anything whatsoever. But hopefully, now I'm in the car, concentrate on driving, uh, and I th probably think I can do a bit more. Right, uh, just to say this story was excellent for them, BD Enklumich. Um But there was one or two things. No, I'm only joking. It was a great story. Uh, I love the hairy monster. Anything with a hairy monster in it, get thumbs up from me. Uh, two things I think you could improve on or to go with. One, you said he went through the, his grandmother's books to look for spells. Uh, you could say there was one, he knew there was one in the safe, he couldn't get his hands on it. Um, not to the very end, once the monster disappeared, he, he goes back to, the, to his, his girlfriend's house and she's lost her keys, so she has to go through the, through the bedroom window. And lo and behold, on the shelf is the same book he's seen in his grandma's uh, safe, safe. And sorry, there's, there's loads of people in the room at the moment. Um, and the second one is when the monster disappears. Little kiss goodnight. He she writes his her, sorry writes her phone number on the on his hand with a little mark, a strange mark, which he doesn't know what it is. Uh, when he goes back to see. Grandma to say sorry for you know looking at his spell, look at her spells. Uh, she, she says, "Oh look, 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 look!" There's she was also left me her number. She sees the, the the mark after the number and starts to back away. Says a few words, spell words. The next minute, she pulls a knife, um, a ceremonial knife on him, and says, "Forgive me." End of story. What happens next? Right, that's what I've got. Sorry. Um, hopefully I'll do some more if it all goes well alright so thanks for that uh, comment Justin uh, it's nice to know that uh, you like anything with a big hairy monster in it because that means you'll be listening to my show for a long time because I've often been called a big hairy monster so 
it's nice to know that I'll always have at least one fan. There's <sighs> a little jad, dad joke for you folks. Um, anyways, uh, so what I gather from your comments, Justin, is that you feel like the, uh, the bit at the end when the mom, or the grandma, sorry, the grandma says, oh, that, that magic book that you have there, that's BS. Uh, none of those spells work. Um, you feel like that wasn't telegraphed enough. The people, you, you couldn't tell that it was, it, there wasn't stuff buried in the lead up that makes you believe that when you hear it. Which, I suppose it's an unbelievable thing. Well, they both happened to cast a spell. Only one of them didn't work because, uh, whatever, because it, it wasn't real. Um, that sounds like a load of hogwash. But uh, on top of it, yeah, it, it did need some kind of something. Something, some telegraph, uh, telegraphing moment, which I didn't have. Um, I was pantsing my way through most of the story. Uh, I didn't have time to do a whole lot of uh, planning, do an outline, although uh, a short story like that one, I probably wouldn't do an outline for anyways. I just kind of plan it in my head and then go with that plan. But... Um, yeah, that, that idea came at the very end, um, after basically I'd written the entire rest of the story, suddenly I had this idea, oh yeah, I could do this, and so I added it in, uh, I don't know if it helped, maybe it made the story worse, maybe it would have just been better if um, they just went home and that was the end. But sorry that it, uh, it didn't, didn't get the level of planning that it should. But, but, you know, I can keep that in mind and work on that in the future. Uh, I feel like I've been doing more pantsing lately. Uh, my outline for Sunny and Gray, for example, is really minimal. You know, I've got a, a what's more or less a step outline. It's just, you know bunch of chapter one is this happens chapter two this happens and it's like a sentence you know um not very detailed i haven't figured out what's how any of that stuff is going to happen and i have to come up with that as i'm writing and i think that kind of counts as pantsing not as much as an outliner i, I don't know if that means i'm somewhere in the middle of outlining and pantsing like i'm an out lancer uh, but, you know, whatever. Uh, we all do our best. Uh, so, with that comment, I can uh, try to improve that in the future, I guess. Make sure. It probably could have used a rewrite or something. I don't know. At the time that I wrote it, I also wasn't very confident. Um, after the stuff that has gone on since then, though, I feel a little more confident in my abilities. And I'm not just, you know, oh, I hope it's good, but I really don't know. Um, writing every day, I guess, makes you feel like a writer because that's what writers do. They write every day. Um, so I can definitely work on that in the future. Uh, Sunny and Gray is going to need probably a decent rewrite. Uh, I don't know that I'll change big things, but, you know, it would probably be worth it to go through and really look it over. The interesting thing is Sunny and Gray has ballooned out of all uh, proportions uh, since I started writing. I've been writing, you know, a thousand words a day, and, yeah, my, my book is now 80... 81, I want to say it was like 81,000 words last night. And I finished the 
first part. I finished part one of Sunny and Gray. Now it comes in two main parts. Uh, but it's not like a epic fantasy or something where people be like, oh yeah, 200,000 words? Sure, I'll read that. Sure, a thousand page story? That's worth it. Uh, instead it's, it's just, um, like a paranormal romance or something like unto that. Par paranormal, I don't know what to call it. Anyways, it's not the kind of thing that people want 200,000 words on. I've only made it through part one. Now, Rish has suggested maybe if it's strong enough, I can just put it out as a separate book, you know? Sunny and Gray can be two books. Sunny, and then book two, Gray. Um, which is what the two parts are called. Uh, I can't decide if I want to do that or not. Uh, maybe I'll just do both. You can buy it as one gigantic tome, or you can buy it as two separate pieces. I don't know. Uh, I'll have to reread it, I guess, and see if I feel that it's strong enough to do something like that with. But I'm really excited. You know, I wrote that last night. I wrote the end of that part, and, and I was, like, all geeked out. I was all hopped up on success or something. I don't know. I was just excited. Uh, it was late at night, but I didn't feel like going to sleep at all. So, that's cool. I don't know that I've ever felt something like that before, where I've written that much. I mean, 80,000 words, that's uh, more than three times the size of my largest story before that. So, that's something, right? I mean, that really is a, a big deal. Um, and it's a novel. I've written a novel now. I can say that I'm a novelist. Um, although, when it comes down to it, I haven't because I, I still have another, like, 80,000 more words to write if I'm going to really finish the story. Um, so, I'm going to keep at it. That's, what, I don't know, another two more months probably to, to write the rest of it if I'm going at 1,000 words a day. Maybe I'll... Maybe once things settle down a little bit, I will uh, kick it up to, to more than a thousand words a day. Uh, I kind of jumped the gun there. I, I meant to give you a whole report on how it has gone so far. Um, a couple episodes ago, I did uh, my responses to, to what everybody had to say. Um, By the way, I never finished saying this uh, because I started recording. I recorded a whole bit where I did say it, and then I looked at the phone and found out that it wasn't recording any video, and so I was frustrated and I had to start over. But I want to say thanks to Justin for sending me that comment on my story. And then secondly, I want to invite anybody else who wants to uh, send me comments. I will use them. Um, Comments on the story that I ran today are welcome. I would love to do an episode on that. Comments on other stories that I have run on the Dune Steve that weren't on the Ankle Cast, I would like to do episodes about them as well. So if you have a comment on a Christmas wish, like what uh, we just did, uh, Justin's comment there, if you have comments on that and you'd like to record them and send them out, feel free. If you have a comment on uh, the 10th album, which is another recent story of mine that ran on the Dune Steve, if you'd like to record a comment about that uh, and send it to me, um, I would love to talk about that too in an episode. And you can record video comments since we're doing video here. And as long as I haven't decided to kill myself or... Uh, give up on video podcasts, since nobody watches them anyways, um, then 
I'll use your video comment in uh, the the episode. So, that being said, back to where I was at. Two episodes ago when I did the comments, uh, I decided to make that goal of doing... Uh, writing 500 words a day for the entirety of February. I figured, you know, February's short, it's only 28 days, so I can totally do that. And so that's what I did, and I actually achieved it. I got so excited, and I really, you know, felt great about myself. Felt like I was doing something worthwhile, and I wasn't just doing my general whining and not achieving and being like, eh, I wish somebody would write my ideas for me. Um, which I'd still love, but, uh, you know, I, I don't expect it. Because why would you when you could write your own ideas? So, um, I wrote for 28 days of 500 words. And then, uh, instead of doing like I'd done five years ago, when I also wrote 500 words a day for a month, I kept going and not only did I keep going but I kicked it up a notch and I took it to the next level and decided I would write a thousand words a day in March uh, I thought that was gonna be really tough but I did just fine and I felt great having done this thing I was so proud of myself and you know it really really boosted my confidence and I, I was blazing through sunny and gray writing a freaking novel, which uh, now I've made it to, I guess. Um, and then um, April came along, and I decided not to kick it up a notch in uh, word count, but instead I was going to give myself a deadline of having to have my words written before 11 o'clock each night. That hasn't worked out as well. It's just been too hard. April has been a tough month. April has... Uh, we, we decided to put our house up for sale. And uh, to start off April, uh, it was spring break. And so uh, we used our spring break as the time to get our house in order, to clean everything up, deep clean everything, scrub everything down. Uh, fix the, you know, little problems that the backyard has that need to be fixed. Um, that kind of stuff. Uh, really f make the house shine so that someone would want to buy it. And uh, while we were doing that, we did a lot of hard work and heavy lifting and, and, and that kind of stuff. And man, I was so tired one day that I just couldn't, I couldn't, do anything anymore I uh, I, I, I decided I was going to go to bed early and, and just take care of myself and you know I, I got in the shower because I needed to shower too because I've been working really hard all day long and I'm like okay I'm going to get in the shower I'll take a shower then I'll, then I'll go to bed and I was so tired I couldn't even stay uh, standing I got in the shower, I turned on that hot water, and you know, oh, it felt so good, and I was just laying, or laying there, I was standing there under the hot shower, the laying there came later, sadly. I was so tired that, um, I couldn't, I couldn't stand up anymore, and my wife has this little, like, footstool that she, uh, she keeps on the, in the shower so that she can, like, put her legs up on it when she's shaving her legs, I guess. Um, and I was, I just, I, I, I decided I was going to use that. <laughs> I got down on my knees and I put this thing underneath my uh, stomach and I just, like, bleh, laid over the top of this thing while the hot water poured down on my back. And that was actually really nice. Normally, like, the farther away you get from the shower, the colder it kind of gets. But that wasn't the case this time around. And it was just, I, it felt great. And I just laid there. And then as I was laying there, I, th I thought, oh, crap. I haven't written my thousand words yet today. 
uh, I'm so screwed. I can't, uh, I can't do them. And then, you know, I had this kind of war in my head where I'm like, you have to do them. You've written more than 60 days in a row. You can't just let that go. And then the other side of me is like, dude, you, you can't do it. You're not, whatever you write is going to be the worst thing ever. You can't, you got to take care of yourself. You're going to injure yourself or something if you don't get to bed. In the end, I actually favored my safety, which that sounds obvious. Someone would do that, but uh, you know, there, there had been many other times in that 60 day period where I was so tired and I instead forced myself to stay up. I think it was just, I was tired, tired, but not like exhausted, physically wiped out tired, which was, I think the big difference on that day as to why I chose to, to not write. But yeah, that was the end of my streak somewhere around 62 or 63 days in a row is when I stopped. But I started right back up the very next day. I told, I confessed to my wife that I hadn't written that night. And she said, well, you're going to have to write double tonight. And she even had it, you know, we knocked off uh, the work on the house a little early so that I could just get to work on writing. And I wrote 2000 words the next night. Uh, a little later, uh, like a week and a half later, I had another issue where I was again, really tired and um, I just fell asleep and I didn't even consider that I hadn't written. I didn't, it didn't even cross my mind. Never once. I never once thought, Oh wait, you still have to write. Instead, I just went to sleep. And then I woke up the next morning and I, and I still, it didn't cross my mind. The next morning was a Saturday. It was the day before Easter. And we did all this stuff for Easter. We went to like the local, uh, Easter egg hunt that's in our city and we went over to my sister's house for a family party and we did a, a egg hunt there and we had dinner. And then we came home and we, we had in-laws in town. So we did some stuff with them. We had dinner. Uh, the family party was lunch. This was then dinner. We had like dinner and we did some stuff with, um, with the in-laws. And then I had, I, we do these like, Easter egg kind of treasure hunt things for Easter with our kids. And that's like my things. <laughs> my wife will get all the stuff that goes in the basket. And my thing is to come up with the whole treasure hunt thing uh, for the kids to do. So I had to put those all together, four of them, which t it takes a lot of time, you know, um, probably like a half hour each one. And by the time I was done, yeah, I again, never once crossed my mind that I hadn't written. So this is two days in a row. I didn't write. I just, it just never came up. <laughs> then the next day my wife's like, Oh, have you been writing? And I went, <gasps> no, holy crap. No, I have not. When did I write last? And I had to think I couldn't remember at all. So I considered trying to write 3,000 words the next night, that Sunday night, on, on Easter, but it just wasn't, it wasn't in the cards. I did write 1,000 words, though, and I've written 1,000 words every night since, so I'm still sticking to it, and I'm still doing well, and last night I wrote 1,450-something words, which included the finale of the first half of the sunny and gray saga, the sunny half of the saga. Next comes the gray half, unfortunately. It's the depressing part. Let's see. The skies look like they do here in that part. Anyways, um, I guess I'm gonna say that this is the end of my ankle cast. I, I, I'm supposed to meet my wife here. I'm, I made it to the parking lot. I don't know how much longer it's gonna be before she gets here, but. Uh, I think I'm going to go in. So, see you later, everybody. Thanks for listening. Have a good three and a half months until I come back for the next episode. Well, hopefully it won't be that long. We'll see you next time, folks. Thanks for, for watching slash listening, depending on whatever it is you're doing. See ya.
Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. Your goal should be a dream with a deadline. That's why I gave you five years. Do it! Do it! You miss 100% of the shots you never take. Take the shot. There will always be things in the way you dream. Don't let your dreams be dreams. You go out and you find why not. You surround yourself with why not. Live a why not life, man. Where we are today is where we are. Today's the starting day. I know what we're gonna do today. Just do it! Do it! And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and three quarters percent guaranteed. That's all it takes to be successful is an attitude. It's an awesome feeling when you truly believe that you're going to be successful. Nothing is impossible! Dreams don't come true. Dreams are made true. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Bye-bye, boys! Have fun storming the castle! Think it'll work? It would take a miracle. Bye-bye! Bye.